All right, guys, so the holiday season is upon us, so what better time than to come up with a list of my favorite tools and accessories. It's also raining here in Asheville, so I cannot finish the porch roof quite yet. That'll be next week. And I think all of these tools and accessories would be super useful for any woodworker, maker, or DIYer shop, and they're all less than 30 bucks. So let's see what I've got in my big box of goodies here. So I have gone ahead and divided my list into three categories. I've got layout and marking, drilling and driving, and shop safety, which I've got some pretty cool ones in there. So let's go ahead and get started with layout and marking. So number one on my list and a tool that I don't think gets enough love is a laser tape measure. And these come in a huge variety of price points. I've got a small DeWalt one at my house that's 30 bucks. This one was about 60 bucks and I've got fancier ones that are like 150 bucks. And usually the more expensive they get, you get a longer range which might be useful depending on the type of work you do. And you also get some sort of fancy screen that might be able to do some calculations for you. To be honest, you can do most of that math on your phone these days. So I think a small compact one is great because you can keep it in your pocket or in your tool belt. And I think you'd be surprised how often you end up using these things. I know for me, I use them constantly when I'm installing trim because it is so much easier to measure for a baseboard or a corner board. And I think you get more accuracy than you do with a standard tape measure, especially on those inside corners. It's also great if you're working up on a ladder, like when I hung up these lights in the shop, I knew I needed them to be about 12 feet from one wall and eight feet from another wall. And trying to extend a tape measure when you're up in the air is just super awkward. And this kind of laser tape is very, very handy for that. Now, the last thing I use it for quite a bit is whenever I'm kind of laying out a new space, especially in SketchUp or any sort of 3D modeling software. When I bought this shop, the first thing I did was go around the entire shop and take a whole bunch of measurements with a laser tape measure. Some of them were like seven 70 plus feet long. So would have been a real pain to do that with a standard tape measure. And then I could take all those dimensions and drop them into SketchUp. So again, these come in a bunch of different price points. A lot of them do have rechargeable batteries these days too, which is really nice. And I definitely recommend checking them out. Next on the list is trim squares or some smaller squares that I'll also talk about, but I think these things are so handy and it's not been until recently that I've started using them. So this is, I think a four and a half inch square, your standard speed square, which is right up there is seven inches. And that might not sound like a huge difference, but if you're trying to do layout in tighter quarters, kind of in between studs, having a slightly smaller square can be super handy. I've also been using it a lot when doing some of the metal kind of trim work on the porch roof. I've seen some other versions of these squares with some little holes here for scribing lines. And I think that's really cool. And overall, I just think you can't have too many squares in your arsenal. And another kind of honorable mention in the small square category is this little micro square from FastCap. This thing has a magnetic base, making it perfect for checking jointer fence squareness or you know, your table saw blade. Uh, I think you would be surprised how often you end up using something like this. Next on the list, and I'm sure you're probably a little tired of hearing about it, but it is that awesome that I have to bring it up again. And that is the Pika Dry Mechanical pencil. So this is essentially like, you know, your standard smaller mechanical pencil on steroids. So this thing features a super fat lead and this is 2.8 millimeters. But one of the coolest things is that the other end of this is a built-in sharpener. So I keep this thing in my tool belt all the time. And with that really fine tip, you can get some very accurate marks. Now, when I was looking around, I also saw that Pika makes a big dry pencil. It features a much fatter lead and would be great if you do a lot of layout or framing work, marking stuff out on OSB subfloors. This pencil, while it will work, you'll just be sharpening it a lot more. So the big dry might be a better option there. They also make different colored leads for these. So you can get red or white or a whole bunch of other colors in case you need to mark on something dark where the standard lead wouldn't really show up. Now, if you've already got a bunch of other kind of more standard pencils lying around, I have a couple other accessories that I think you should definitely check out. And number one is this awesome electric pencil sharpener I picked up recently. This is battery powered. The thing I like about it the most is that you can change how acute of an angle the tip of your point is after sharpening. So I use these Stabilo white pencils whenever I'm working with something like walnut or a darker material. And if you sharpen the tips too pointy, the lead ends up getting pretty fragile. So let me just show you how quick this thing works. And you just get a perfect point every single time. It's got a nice big chamber for all your shavings. And I don't know, I just think this thing is awesome. 
In that same category of sharpeners, if you've got a bunch of carpenter's pencils lying around, which I still love the standard carpenter pencil because you can tuck it up in your hat very easily and that is kind of my go-to. These can be notoriously kind of difficult to sharpen. There are tons of YouTube videos on how to sharpen carpenter's pencils, which is insane. I personally love these little specialty carpenter's pencil sharpeners. This one has a little rotating insert that keeps the pencil centered. I can show you how it works. As you can see, you get a really nice point on here, nice and sturdy. So again, if you're doing that kind of layout work, writing on rough surfaces, I think a carpenter's pencil is pretty hard to beat. Plus you get a ton of these as freebies. You know, you buy stuff at your local hardware store, that kind of thing. And one other pro tip, if you're gonna use this kind of sharpener, go ahead and sharpen both ends of the pencil. So that way you always have a sharp tip to be working with. All right, I guess let me clean up this mess before uh, we move on to the next section. All right, before moving on to the next section, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, 70 Mai and their Terra 1000 power station. So power stations have become a pretty integral part of my day-to-day -day life. And this Terra 1000 is one of the best design power stations I've used to date. The Terra 1000 has a thousand watt hour capacity with a 1200 watt output, meaning it can run multiple heavy duty appliances at once. This includes things like blenders, microwaves, and coffee makers, making it great for car camping or power outages. The Terra 1000 features 10 power outlets, including three 110 volt AC outlets, two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, two 13.6 volt DC ports, and a car charger port. And you can plug your laptop, phone, camera, and other devices directly into those DC ports, which improves the charging efficiency. The Terra can be fully recharged in about two hours, and it'll charge to 80% in about an hour. And you can recharge the battery by, of course, plugging it into your wall outlet or a generator. It can also be charged with the included car charger or with 70 Mai's solar panels. And this makes the Terra 1000 ideal for off-grid work, and I think it'd be super handy on the job site. The Terra 1000 was designed to be a super safe power solution. It features advanced heat dissipation for quiet cooling, as well as a large backup fan to reduce heat when the unit is operating at full capacity. The Terra also features a galvanized steel chassis, meaning it's drop resistant and its EV grade batteries are protected by a Texas instrument battery management system. Best of all, the Terra 1000 is lightweight and portable, weighing in at less than 28 pounds. It features an ergonomic silicone handle for easier handling, and it's one of the lightest power stations in that 1000 watt hour range, making it not much heavier than a watermelon. The Terra 1000 can also be connected to the 70 My app through Bluetooth, allowing it to be controlled remotely. And within the app, you can turn the unit on and off, manage settings, set timers, and more. Overall, I was really impressed with this thing, and if you'd like to learn more about the 70 My Power Station Terra 1000, check out the link in the video description below. Big thanks again to 70 My for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to the list. All right, on to the drilling and driving section. And I think this next accessory will probably not be a surprise to any of you who have watched my videos for a while. And it's something I get a ton of questions about in the comments, and it is this impact driver bit holder. It's a magnetic holder, straps to your impact driver. This is made by FastCap, it's called a Pro Hold. It's about 20 bucks and I absolutely love it. I have it on all of my impact drivers that will fit it on there. And I'll talk about that a little more in a second. I'm able to keep you know every bit I need regularly. It's the best way I've found to keep my bits organized and close at hand. Now, as I mentioned, not every impact driver can support this pro hold. And a prime example is this atomic impact driver from DeWalt. I love this thing because it's super compact, but it doesn't have that kind of protruding back section that you need to be able to strap the pro hold around. So in this case, I use another bit holder. This one's made by Spider. I don't like it quite as much because these smaller bits tend to kind of slide back too far. And then you have to use another longer bit to kind of push it out. And I don't know, that's just not super elegant. It is good for these kind of longer two inch bits. So that's what I use it for. So moving on from there, another accessory I get a lot of questions about in the comments is this bit holder. And this is made by Weira. I absolutely love this thing. And one of my favorite features about it is the fact that you can change the bits one handed. I don't know why that's not standard, but I've had so many bit holders that you can't do that. This has this kind of click unlock motion that allows you to quickly remove your bit. There's a magnet inside here, so it magnetizes your bits so you don't lose your screws. It locks into place super firmly. There is no way that's coming out because that is the main reason I got this because that is one of the more frustrating things if you're driving in a screw, especially if you're up on a ladder or something. Something. inevitably you pull your impact driver away the bit stays with the screw and 
every time as you go to reach for the bit, it falls out to the ground and is a total pain. So works fine with both the kind of smaller bits and the longer kind of two inch bits. And I have one for every one of my impact drivers. Next up in drilling and driving. And another thing I get a lot of questions about in the comments is this Amana countersink bit. And I almost didn't include this one because evidently the price on this has gone up here recently. When I originally bought a set of these back in like 2018, they were right around $30. I think now they're more like $40, but I think they are absolutely worth it. The thing that makes these special is that they have this rotating brass depth stop. And so you can adjust that depth. So if you want to barely countersink the hole, you can kind of have it flush with the wings of the bit here. Or if you want to use a plug cutter that's sized to work with this, you can set it much deeper and then plug all your screw holes for a really nice look if you're doing, you know, some kind of nicer furniture, that kind of thing. They sell these in a bunch of different sizes. I usually go with the eighth inch one because that works with most of the screws I use. But one other thing thing I would mention is just be careful with this thing. If it's loaded in a drill or an impact driver on your bench, I have had it topple off of the bench and it bent the shaft, which made it, you know, completely useless, just garbage at that point. And so that was a hard lesson to learn. So now when I'm using this thing, I lay my impact driver or drill flat on the bench to protect my $40 bit. Next up in the drilling and driving category is maybe a, a weird one, but I think it fits really well. And that is a thread checker. Now this one was definitely more than 30 bucks. It was about 60 bucks. This is a nicer wall mounted version, but they sell smaller ones that are on kind of a cable with all the same functionality. These things are just so handy. If you're assembling something with some more specialized bolts and you happen to drop or lose one of them, you can quickly check and see exactly what size it is. Another use case I found recently was I was trying to put some ground bars in a sub panel here at the shop. I did not have holes pre-drilled, so I needed to drill and tap a hole for the mounting screws that came with the ground bar. I was able to quickly check it with the thread checker, figure out what size it was, and then get a corresponding tap. Speaking of which, the next tool on the list is this set of drilling and tapping bits. And these things are amazing if you do any kind of metal working. So traditionally, if you wanted to tap a hole in steel, you would have to figure out the right size of bit to pre-drill the hole. Go ahead and pre-drill it, get out your tap, put the tap handle on, you know, painstakingly tap the hole. And then God forbid you wanted a countersink on that hole, you would then have to do that after all that with another bit. These bits do all of that in one super super quick motion. Now you wouldn't be able to tap a hole in one inch thick steel here, but for most, I think use cases into probably up to three sixteenths or quarter inch steel, these work awesome. I went ahead and bought this whole set. I have a bunch of other ones that I've bought kind of one by one, and I'm glad to have every size now with the backup so that in case I break one, I won't need to run out and get more. So last, but certainly not least in the drilling and driving is some good screw storage. There are tons of different brands of these. I really like this particular one though. The cool thing is it's got a clear lid so you can easily see what all is in the container. If you open the lid and then let's say remove one of the containers, you can close the lid back and it's got little tabs built into the lid so that the bins that are left don't move around. I don't know that I'd wanna be carrying this thing fully loaded onto the job site every day, but it does have a mounting system to work with Craftsman's mobile toolboxes. I have all of my more standard kind of woodworking screws organized in a similar container, and I just think they're awesome. <clears throat> All right, so that wraps up drilling and driving. So I guess let's move to shop safety. And the first item on this shop safety list might be a bit of a surprise, but it is a good set of utility knife blades. And this is something I don't think I really bought until recently. I kind of just used the blades that came with my utility knives. And it is amazing the difference having a constant supply of fresh blades make. The old adage that a sharp knife is safer than a dull knife is absolutely true with utility knives. I think we all have a tendency to use these things way past their kind of lifespan. And if you are pushing super hard trying to cut something, you are inevitably gonna slip and slice yourself. It has definitely happened to me and having a good set of blades will hopefully help to prevent that. These are carbide blades, which are kind of scarily sharp actually, but they will slice through anything very, very quickly. Next up in the shop safety category is this really cool dust collection system from DeWalt. This is not a sponsored DeWalt video. I just happen to have a lot of their stuff here. But when I first started using this system, I actually 
actually really hated it because I didn't really understand it. If you guys have bought any kind of more recent DeWalt tools, I know my FlexVolt miter saw, some of my circular saws, some of my sanders, like the drywall sander that I just picked up, they all have this weird dust port and I couldn't really figure out. It didn't work with an inch and a quarter hose, didn't work with like my Festool hose. So couldn't figure it out for a while, but it turns out that DeWalt makes a custom adapter that is really cool. And the thing that makes it cool is that it has this twist lock functionality. So it mechanically locks onto whatever dust port you attach it to. Because one of the most frustrating things when you're trying to be good and safe with dust collection is having the hose constantly falling off. With this mechanical connection, it will not come off. You can literally pull the shop back around with the connector. That's also obviously super handy with things like sanders. And I use that quite a bit when I did all of the drywall sander work on these plywood walls. The other cool thing about the system is that DeWalt makes some adapters so that you can use other kind of more standard accessories. Like this is an inch and a quarter adapter. So that just goes right in here. Again, locks in place. This is a 35 millimeter adapter. So for like Festool and Bosch stuff, again, locks right into place. So it's a really cool system. It's a little expensive for some pieces of plastic. I think this is about 20 bucks for this adapter. I think it's well worth it, especially if you have some DeWalt tools already. And it's super easy to swap over to this system because this adapter can thread onto any standard inch and a quarter dust hose. So check it out. All right, next up on the list, and this might seem like a weird one, but it is these Curad bandages. And these things, I would go as far as to say these are a game changer. And that's because they have two very specialty shaped bandages that I think are very applicable to the type of cuts we get as woodworkers and makers and people who work with our hands. So let me pull out the two that I really love and use the most. So these are the two bandages that really sold me on this kit. This one is for your fingertip and this one is for your knuckle. And let me go ahead and put them on and just show you how they work. So as you can see, the fingertip bandage completely wraps around your fingertip and is extremely secure. If you've ever tried to put a kind of standard shaped bandaid here, it's going to fall off within minutes of going back to work. And it always seems like you cut your hand right at the beginning of the day. So you're bleeding all over everything. It also fits inside a glove really easily. This knuckle one, as you can see, wraps perfectly around your knuckle and is split on the back to still allow you to have all of your range of motion. It was like seven bucks for this pack of 50 of them. And I will definitely be replacing these whenever I run out, which will probably be soon because you just always are banging your hands into stuff when you're working. I guess let me take these off. That's going to be fun. All right, next on the safety list are these Uncle Bill's Sliver Grippers. And I saw these in a Jay Bates video a couple years ago, and they are amazing. They're essentially just extremely, extremely sharp tweezers. But, you know, again, if you work with a lot of wood or metal, you are always going to be getting splinters. And of all the tweezers I've ever used, these are the most reliable for actually being able to remove those splinters easily. It's super cheap. It's like 17 bucks for a three pack. I have a three pack at home and a three pack here at the shop just so I can never lose them, but I absolutely think they're worth picking up. I probably need to put a couple in the truck as well because you're just always getting splinters. I don't know, we work with wood. That's just how it is. In that same vein, another thing I've kind of gotten into lately is wearing gloves while I work. Uh, I really like these, again, DeWalt, not sponsored, but these DeWalt ones, they are touch screen capable, which obviously I'm always using my phone. Uh, that's really nice. As you can see, these have seen better days, probably about time for a new pair. I was finding, especially with doing some of this renovation work, my hands were just getting torn up, especially if you're doing stuff like electrical work or again, working with rough lumber. These just really protect your hands. They give you a lot more grip for whatever reason I didn't think about using for years and now they're an absolute must have for me. All right, last but certainly not least on this list is a good quality fire extinguisher that you know works. That's probably the most important thing when it comes to fire extinguishers. There's really no excuse not to have them kind of all around your shop. They're fairly cheap. I think this was like 20 bucks and it came with a wall mount so you can have it near any sort of potential source of fire. Another thing that I've seen here lately, I think uh, Matt Reisinger did a video on it, were these fire extinguisher balls. And so you can wall mount them in an area that you think, you know, might see a fire. So for me, maybe where I do my welding or near my CNC and they just sit there 
until they feel fire over 300 degree temperatures for a certain amount of time. And then the ball literally explodes with all of the same stuff, the dry kind of fire extinguisher material that is in a fire extinguisher. You don't have to be there to extinguish the fire. So I think that's pretty cool peace of mind. I have seen some kind of varying price points. I think the brand that was on Matt's video was Elide, but then I saw some cheaper ones on Amazon for around 30 bucks. So probably not super easy to test those things, but I think it'd be pretty easy peace of mind and I am definitely gonna get a handful for here at the shop since I'm just not here all the time. And when I go home at night, I certainly don't want a fire breaking out. And then last, but certainly not least in the safety category is some good clothing. Uh, like this Crafted Workshop merch. Uh, I have completely revamped my merch store. I've added a lot of new designs and new styles, so go check those out. I had a lot of fun with them, and it's something I want to do a lot more of. So yeah, let me know what you think, and if there are any items that I don't have on there that you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section below. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you guys have any other tools that you would like to recommend, again, leave them in the comments. If it's your first time here, go ahead and get subscribed and ring the notification bell. I'll link to all of the tools and accessories I mentioned in this video in the video description below, of course. And last, if you guys want to support me, again, I sell merch. I've got plans available for a lot of my woodworking projects, and I also have both Patreon and YouTube members set up. All right, thanks for watching, y'all, and until next week, happy building.